after game one, it really seemed like the CLS Knights were on their way to dominating this series and uh, barging into the semifinals. But in game two, the Saigon Heat found a way to extend this series, and here we are now. Game three of the quarterfinals in your ABL Season 9. Here inside Gorkerta Jaya in Surabaya, Indonesia. My name is Judd Sulit. With me, Marco Benitez. Marco, after that outburst from the Knights in Game 1, I don't think anyone thought we would be here yep. playing a do-or-die game between these two teams. That's exactly correct, Judd. And you know, this is the only remaining quarterfinals matchup that is still undecided. So this promises to be another exciting matchup, especially after what happened in Saigon where the Saigon Heat were able to steal or steal game two and force a rubber match here. Winner of this game faces the Mono Vampire. Singapore Slingers escaping with a win over the Macau Black Bears. They will be facing Hong Kong Eastern in a rematch of the 2016-2017 final. So it's going to be an exciting matchup here between the CLS Knights and the Saigon Heat. And we can't wait for this game to start. Absolutely. And when you're talking about these two teams, they have been trying to get as far as they could in the ABL for years now. And here we are. They are one win away from the semifinals. What's going to be important for these two teams to get a win here? Well, of course, number one, you, the keys to the game. Score more points, especially from the perimeter. 31, 27 of the 31 first quarter points in game one came from the outside. They need to rebound and box out. They arguably have the better front line led by Daryl Watkins. Make them play the half-court offense, especially here in Gorkerta Jaya, where they average about 10 triples per ball game, BTN CLS Knights have to execute in the half court and of course they have to finish strong. One of the best in terms of th uh, in terms of transitioning from live ball turnovers to conversion on their end, they have to convert. You see this player matchup, Darrell Watkins over Kyle Barone, but Kyle Barone came up big, especially in that fourth quarter in CIS, scored I believe seven points in the clutch, yep. uh, including that uh, go ahead put back and that uh, game time triple uh, in that fourth quarter. You know, when you're talking about Darren Watkins, his first stint here, the very first game in the ABL, he was slow and he looked like he wasn't in shape, but he slowly progressed and is really, and really has been big help for his team. This is what happened in game one. You were talking about it. A big, big win for CLS. But then in game two, Trayvon News yeah. taking over and really willing his team to another game here in Season 9. That was a Trayvon Hughes show, especially the third quarter where he scored 17 third quarter points en route to 30 points, leading scorer for the Heat in that game. So you can be sure he will be a marked man uh, this evening here at Gore Kurtajaya. With these two teams, they are quite evenly matched up, yeah. even though the result of that game in Game 1 was lopsided. You can tell that they have weapons to counter each other. What's going to be, what has been, the biggest thing in this series? Well, I think for the biggest thing here for the BTN CLS Knights, of course, is their outside shooting. The number one in the league in terms of scoring from the outside at about 37%. Max Yesho has to be big for them. 24 points in game one, 21 points in game two, but he missed two crucial free throws that could have tied that ball game and it eventually led to a four point advantage for the Saigon Heat going into the last 20 seconds of that game. So he has to dictate the tempo in the fourth quarter. He has to have better shot selection, especially since this is their home floor. And for the CLS Knights, you know, you would have wanted to end the series in game two. You would have wanted to secure your seat in the semifinals. But you know what they give? They give their fans another show here at home, but they will have to find a way to limit this man the way that they did in game one. Well, they cannot give him confidence in the first quarter. You see the big turnaround from six points on 3 of 15 from the field, going up to 30 points in that big game too. Of course, you can argue that is back home in CIS. It's a different story here in Gorker Tajaya for guys like Trayvon Hughes, D'Angelo Hamilton, although D'Angelo Hamilton, one of the few bright spots for the Saigon Heat in game one. So, but I think as the play, key playmaker, Trayvon, the way Trayvon Hughes plays and the way the, the BTN CLS Knights defend him here will dictate or will determine the outcome of this game. You know, D'Angelo Hamilton, very talented player, a big part of the Saigon Heat. But I think you want to use him more as a defender. Yeah. I think when he's the leading scorer of the team, it's more bad news than good. And especially for this guy, Cody Celia. Remember, uh, Quatran had six turnovers in the first half of that game one. So Cody Celia started for Coach Kyle Julius, an immediate impact. Four triples in the first quarter and really dictated the tempo, dictated the play for the Saigon Heat, especially brought the energy of the crowd early in that game and it was 
pretty much lights out, especially for Trayvon Hughes in the second half. When it's a regular season game, when you don't have your backs against the wall, you can afford turnovers. You can avoid lost possessions and mm -hmm. empty ones. But when you're one loss away from ending everything you've worked hard for for the last five to six months, that's why you make these adjustments. Okay, one guy commits so many turnovers. I'm going to make that adjustment. Celia, you're starting now. Yeah, and it's a testament to the to the cohesiveness and the chemistry and the confidence that Coach Kyle Julius has given his local players for a guy like Corey Celia, who did not play significant minutes in the first game, to come up big and start out game two and really make a significant contribution. On the other side for BT and CLS Knights, we are expecting solid performances from some of their locals as well. Brandon Joato, in my book, yeah. one of the leading candidates as well for local MVP. And he's going to be a big factor as well on the defensive end, especially if he will be matched up at times against Kyle Barone or even D'Angelo Hamilton or even uh, Chris Durker, who was also an X factor for them because he's the guy primarily def defending uh, Doug Herring, which a uh, very unorthodox way to defend Doug Herring, but it worked for the Saigon Heat in game two. And you know what, Marco, just an hour ago, the other game three of the yeah. quarterfinals just wrapped up with um, the Singapore Slingers taking a two-point win over the Macau Black Bears. And I wouldn't be surprised if this game between the CLS Knights and the Saigon Heat would be as close, maybe even need the extra minutes to settle this one. And you can feel the excitement, you can feel the tension in the air. Big task here for our referees from Singapore, Malaysia, and the Philippines. But as you know, Gorker Tajai is going to be rocking here to start this ball game out. And indeed, it is rocking immediately as they see the Saigon Heat try to pump their team up. This stadium has always been unforgiving yeah. ever since the first time the ABL set foot here. But the Saigon Heat, I think they're one of the teams that's good in responding to these kinds of crowds. You have to remember the Saigon Heat were able to get a victory here early in the season, although you can argue there were still no Doug Herring and Darrell Watkins in the game. And just to give you an idea of how tough it is to win here in Gorkerta Jaya, from averaging about 32.32% from long distance, the Saigon Heat only shoot 25% from deep here in Gorkerta Jaya. So those are the types of odds they will be facing. For now, Marco, we've already been introduced to Saigon Heat. Let's meet the home team.
kita Indonesia will be starting usually it's uh, Chris Durker but for the CLS Knights of course their usual starter is probably the best scoring uh, best scoring five here in the ASEAN Basketball League I don't think anyone or not a lot of people expected them to come out in the middle <laughs> of the stand but they did and I love that that what happened there with the lights from the mobile phones out there lighting everything up the stars are going to come out and shine here today for these two teams, actually, not just for the CLS Knights. But of course, both teams hoping that the stars align for them. And of course, for the BTN CLS Knights, they have to draw a lot of energy from this crowd. This is their home floor. They have to defend it. They are undefeated here with this current lineup. Uh, their only loss against the Saigon Heat was with their previous lineup of Amonte Brandon and uh, without uh, Doug Herring and Daryl Watkins. So it's, uh, it is up to them to protect their home floor. I was in shoot around earlier. I've been trying to take a look at the faces of these players. They've all been wearing poker faces. Their game faces out here in Gorkerta Jaya. You just know that they are dead serious about the mission today. And that is not only to win a game, but to keep themselves alive here in Season 9. Well, for the Saigon Heat, the keys for them, of course, to defend the perimeter. One of the most potent weapons of the Knights, especially here at home. Number two is defend the paint. Uh, they cannot allow the BTN CLS Knights to feed off of those second chance opportunities to get baskets on putbacks. And of course, they have to execute. One thing about their first game experience here was that they, they fell a lot to settling for those outside shots. They have to continue to execute well the way they did in game two back in back in Saigon. Marco, if there was one start difference between game one and game two that resulted to those kinds of outcomes, complete flips, what was that factor? Well, I think uh, shot selection and execution, especially in the half court. We saw in the fourth quarter uh, that Coach Kyle Julius and the Saigon Heat stuck to their game plan of attacking Maxi Escher using D'Angelo Hamilton, and it really spelled a lot. It, it caused Maxi Escher to exert a lot of effort on the defensive end and probably could have contributed to him missing those two crucial free throws. So they have to stay within their system, defend the perimeter well of the BTN CLS Knights, and again, execute, execute, execute here in Gorkur Tajaya. You know, since you mentioned the place, and you mentioned this as well earlier, home court advantage this is where it pays off the hard work yeah. and the wins you got back in the elimination round when you're playing such an important game you want your home crowd feet away from you you know it could have been also the advantage that saigon used in game two to get that win we know that that place uh, cis stadium in saigon in ho chi minh city it's also unforgiving yeah, it is it can get loud, it can get rowdy when they're backing their team up. And it's easy for them to draw energy from that crowd in Saigon, at home in Saigon in this series against the BTNC last night. Throughout the season, they average about 82 points per game. But here in Gorkurta Jaya, they dip by seven points per game. So you see the, the lack of output here for the Saigon. Heat. Meanwhile, for the BTNC last night, they thrive in this, atmos this atmosphere. They love shooting in these rims. From, from averaging about seven triples per game in, in CIS, they average about 10 triples per game here in Borker Tajaya. There was one game back in the elimination round where they really torched Macau in this stadium. Hit 22 three-pointers yeah. in that game. You just know that home court could be, could be a big factor. First crack at a basket will be with the CLS Knights. And here's that matchup once again. Chris Durker on Doug Herring. So they actually start with Durker instead of Young. And Corey Celia as well as the starter well, for Coach Kyle Julius. If it's not broken, then there's no need to change it. A miss there for Hughes. Rebound taken by CLS. They're off and running. 
Jawato the kick out. Way long is blocked by Durker. And that's an excellent defensive effort there from Chris Durker. That is the sweet spot of Wong Wei Long. Those corner tri triples. We mentioned some of the locals for CLS, including Jawato. Don't forget that Wong Wei Long, before he made his way to Indonesia, he was a two time local MVP oh, yes. with the Singapore Slingers. And he has that knack for hitting big shots. Jawato, the kick out. Esho now. Wong Wei Long, wide open. Bucket! And that is exactly. How they started out game one, seven triples in the first quarter. Started out by Wong Wei Long. The crowd backing their team up immediately. Hughes misses. Wong with the board. Jawato sees an opening blocked upstairs by Baron. Great help defense there by Kyle Baron, averaging close to three blocks per ball game. He's going to be relied upon to be the last line defender for the Heat. Durker trying to get position. He has size advantage against Wong. They go back to that, but the defense of CLS ready for it. Take the ball away, Wong. That's a turnover there for the Saigon Heat. And again, you have to take care of the basketball here in Gorkur Tajaya. Esha defended well. Thought he was fouled. Battle for the board taken by Watkins. Watkins will draw personal on Barone. Uh, that is what Daryl Watkins loves to do, especially here at home. Against the Saigon Heat, he averaged about 20 points, close to double digits in terms of rebounding. For the rest of the season, he only averaged about 14 points, so he's normally extra pumped up against the Heat. And we'll, well, he's facing a tough challenge here. Barone and Hamilton, that's not a joke of a tandem that, he, that uh, Watkins will have to battle with un underneath. Well, you can tell that he's up for it. Four to nothing lead right now for the Knights. Or did they rule the... Oh, the initial shot from Wong Wei Long was only a two. So it's only three to none for so that's CLS. Long two, yep. Watkins misses. Ball now with the Saigon Heat. You're Saigon. You're trying to silence this crowd. How do you start your attack? What do you want to do initially on offense? Well, initially try to attack the post where you have the advantage right there. Kyle Barone has the mismatch against Maxi Esho. If you can get a couple of fouls from Maxi Esho here in the first quarter, that's going to spell a big difference. But you have to get good shots up if you're the Saigon Heat because once you start missing from the three, CLS will capitalize. You know what? The interior defense of Saigon has been rock solid to start this game. Hughes. The kick out to Durker. Chris gives it to Barone. Thought about the three. Kicks it out. Trayvon, bottom of the net. And those are the types of shots that you want. Kyle Barone initially was open, but decided to take it strong, suck the defense in, and then that kick out three to Trayvon Hughes. We haven't even played three full minutes, and everyone here is pumped up. It seems like all the players after a basket, Marco, they have something to say either to <laughs> opponents or to the crowd. Herring will miss. Long rebound to Wong Wei Long. He gets away, blocked by Hamilton. Offensive board, he blocks Watkins. A couple of attempts, Saigon secures possession. Uh, and that's just tremendous interior defense there from the Saigon. Heat. They've stopped two or three possessions. All but Hughes misses at the basket. Jawato will miss again. Hamilton has done an excellent job yep. defending the rim. That is the intimidation factor there by D'Angelo Hamilton. He takes it all the way, will miss. Use the offensive board and the putback. And whenever the Saigon Heat can get out on the break, that's a two-on-one situation. They have to capitalize just like they did there. And that's a seven to nothing blitz that the Saigon Heat have brought out here. Esha trying to get position against Celia. Herring swinging that basketball, Jawato from the corner, drills the three. And Brandon Jawato seems to always hit his triples whenever it's here in Gorkurta Jaya, averaging about 36% from downtown. And that's really remarkable for his size. Yeah. Gives the CLS Knights a lot of versatility. CLS double teaming Trayvon Hughes on that possession. That's going to result in a foul, but it's a much better start here for the Saigon Heat as compared 
with that game one. Trayvon News looking to repeat the kind of output, kind of performance he had in game two where he dropped 30 points. Here he is, ball taken away by Herring. And a foul given up by Hughes. A frustration foul giving a body check after losing that ball to Dog Herring. We have a timeout here, a breather that everyone here inside the Gorkerta Jaya needs. We'll be back with more ABL basketball. This is game three, do or die between the CLS Knights and the Saigon Heat. Back here inside the Gorker Tajaya, this is game three of a best of three series between the CLS Knights and the Saigon Heat. It's the quarterfinals of the ABL. Yes, it's only the quarterfinals, but the atmosphere feels like it's already game uh -huh. five of the championship. Jotsulit and Marco Benitez here bringing the action from Surabaya, Indonesia. Marco, how would you describe the first five or four and a half minutes of this match. Well, already if you're coach Kyle Julius, this is a much better start for your team. Although Kyle Barone gets attacked there by Jadel Watkins. That's a good play off the timeout for the BTN CLS Knights. So when it's the Saigon Eid, Barone is trying to attack Esho. But for the CLS Knights, it's Watkins trying to attack Barone. And that's a bad pass there from D'Angelo Hamilton. Did not have an angle to enter that ball into Kyle Barone. Let's see if the BTN CLS Knights try to attack Kyle Barone once again. Watkins, that is going to be a traveling violation. Good stop for Barone. And lucky break as well for Kyle Barone as he hit his, his left arm also got caught up there. Lucky. You know, even though Watkins has had a couple of buckets underneath, has drawn a couple of fouls, you still have to say that the Saigon Heat's yeah. interior defense has been quite solid. That's right, Judd. And you know, they, they, you do not get the sense that uh, the BTN CLS Knights have control of the tempo and the pace of this game as the Saigon Heat have been very deliberate in their half-court set. Barone finding some space underneath. Nobody there to double-team Kyle Barone from the baseline, so does well to get it on the reverse. One-point lead, Saigon. A home team now. Wong almost losing it. They recovered. They sent it back to Herring. They're trying to go to Esho now against Justin Young. Maxi steps back. Remember that the Saigon Heat, that's Maxi Esho's former team. Durker takes it all the way. Wow, what an attack there for Chris Durker. And you know, that's another transition basket. Off a great stop from Justin Young, staying in front and challenging that three-point attempt from Maxi Esho. Wong looking again for Watkins. Now against Turker. Minor miscommunication there, but the Knights recover. Here's Herring against Celia. He makes his attack. Goes inside, high off the glass and in. That's just better offense there from Doug Herring. Excellent defense already as everybody collapsed in the paint, but the nice floater from Herring. How about the response there? Oh, Young with an acrobatic putback. And Maxi Escher is wondering where that help or where the, his teammates are for the rebounding as that's an easy putback from Justin Young. Yeah, he had to chase Trayvon Hughes when Hughes got away from his initial defender. No one there to box Young out. 
They do get this open look. Joe Watno will miss this time. He hit one from the other side yeah. earlier. Saigon Heat dodging a bullet on that one as nobody went out to close out on Joe Watto. Hughes takes it from deep. Craven hasn't really found his rhythm yet in this game. Craven Hughes so far zero for three. Or make that one out of three from long distance, but he has five points to lead the Saigon Heat. But it's a much better start as compared to game one where I believe he got his first bucket late in the second quarter. And he was limited to only six points in that game. Three for 15 from the field. And as talented as Young, uh, sorry, as Trayvon Hughes says, we've seen it all season long. You don't expect him to fold in, in the playoffs, but you know sometimes really the pressure can get to you. Yeah. And of course the conditions here in Gorkur Tajai just make it all the more difficult to score or to get your normal rhythm. Herring getting away. The beautiful pass leaves it for Nugroho. And you remember game one when Firma Nugroho came off the bench, scored a bucket and played excellent defense in place of Daryl Watkins. Early substitution, Nugroho is in and that's a nice drop pass from Doug Herring who have just close to nine assists per ball game. You know, one thing Herring has shown here in ABL 9 is that when he is called upon to score, he can very much do so. But if he needs to impact a way in a different manner, mm -hmm. in a manner of setting his teammates up, he's very capable of that as well. And because he draws so much attention from the defense whenever he makes that penetration, there's always somebody who's open and normally it's the big guy under the rim. Unfortunately, Nugroho could not complete the three-point play. The Heat still up, 13 to 12. About two and a half minutes remaining in the first period. Use nine on the 24, Trayvon. They're moving that basketball. Kwa, he will miss. Now it's CLS Knights turn to attack. They go down low to Esho against Justin Young. Maxi just finding the litless of space, making the most of it. And again, that time, good recognition from Doug Herring once they got the switch. Found Maxi Esho in the post. That's a mismatch for him against Justin Young. And that's an opening for CLS because Hamilton is sitting on the bench for Saigon. Can the Heat recover? Trayvon loses the ball. Attacking now, Barone will take it from the bottom of the net. That's a big shot there from Kyle Barone. 23 seconds of great defense from the home squad, but the Saigon Heat bailed out by that triple from Barone. And that is the reason why Barone has stayed with Saigon throughout this entire ninth season. He's a threat from wherever. How about that pass? How did Herring find Jawato there? And there's also that familiarity between teammates. It's whenever Doug Herring makes a penetration, somebody has to cut from the outside. That time Jawato cutting in, getting that drop pass. That entry pass from Saigon hasn't worked well. CLS has been reading it very well. And Herring again with a fantastic find for Nugroho. That's four assists already for Doug Herring here in the first quarter. Excellent job finding his teammates. And his assists have made a lot of impact in this game. Barone will miss from deep. Knights now ahead, 18 to 16. They have a two for one if they go early. Herring, he's still going slow, but he may want to try to do that. Herring, wow! Doug Herring putting on a show here in the first. And it looks like he heard us. The ball is going to go back to them after this possession from the Heat. They actually turned the shot clock oh. off. So lucky break here for the Heat as they get the last say here in the first quarter. Five point lead for the Knights. Saigon Heat looking to put the punctuation mark in the first sentence of this game. Hughes, free throw line jumper, no good. And that will be the first quarter. Initially the Saigon Heat gaining some ground but then one man started to take over, Doug Herring. I think he, I believe he accounted for nine or seven of the seven of the, la the last seven points of the BTN CLSI, either assisting or scoring on his own. And because of his performance, 
The CLS Knights enjoying a five-point lead at the end of one. Second quarter of action about to begin here inside the Gorker Tajaya. This is game three of the quarterfinals. Do or die between CLS Knights and the Saigon Heat. They split the first two games, winning one each at home. Right now it's the CLS Knights enjoying that advantage as we head into the final match of this series. Who will move on? and face Mono Vampire in the semi-finals. That's what they're trying to figure out. Saigon getting a nice attack courtesy of Barone. Hi Barone, already with nine points here in the first half to lead all scorers for the Saigon. He'd one thing going for the BTNC last night. They already have six assists in the first half alone. Four of those coming from Doug Herring. How about that bucket for Maxi Esho? Has been pretty unstoppable here in this game, too. And whatever you talk about, assists. BPN CLS Knights at home against the Saigon Heat average about 18 assists per ball game. When they are on the road or in Saigon, they only average about seven assists per ball game. And a steal here for the Knights. Kurniawan all the way, getting the bucket and the foul. And that makes the crowd erupt once again. Seven turnover points from the BTN CLS Knights. And look at the support that the crowd here inside the stadium is giving their team captain, or their former team captain, and one of the mainstays of the Indonesian national team. And you know, this is the guy that they want to erupt, especially towards the latter portion of the season. His game has taken, his offense has taken a dip. He has not really gotten his groove, although he hit a big shot in the fourth quarter in game two. But I'm sure everybody here at Gorker Itajai waiting for Sandy Kurniawan to have those one of those big time games. Well, he starts to that three point play, giving his team an eight point lead. If you're Saigon, you don't want to fall behind early, like what happened in game one. Hamilton, ball tap. D'Angelo Hamilton asking for a foul. Referee saw otherwise. Excellent help defense there from Doug Herring. That is the matchup that they attacked in, four, in the fourth quarter of game two, that Hamilton versus Estro. So good help there from Doug Herring. Nine seconds on the shot clock. They go inside to Barone. Kyle misses. Young offensive board, they miss again. And it's Hidayat getting that rebound. Extra effort there on defense from Firman Negrojo. So positive contribution off the bench. The Knights looking to establish a double digit advantage here in the second. Herring being bothered. Arif had to dribble out. Only six seconds on the shot clock. Herring will pull up from way beyond the arc. Will miss. That was halfway in though. Yep, that would have uh, 
made the, the crowd erupt once again. Baron, he is the leading scorer of the Knights of the Heat right now with nine points. And possibly not the shot that Coach Kyle Julius had wanted, especially after that nice stop on the defensive end. Idiot kicks it out to Herring. CLS trying to move that basketball around. Now it stays with Esho. He attacks. Down the middle, draws a foul on Hamilton. And you know, despite the foul shot, you see, you like the ability of, of uh, D'Angelo Hamilton to keep in step with Maxi Esho. That time almost had a clean block up top. That is going to be foul number one on D'Angelo Hamilton. It's just so difficult to stop a Maxi Esho because Esho can shoot from outside. He can put the ball on the floor. And once he does, he has a number of, of uh, different ways to finish as well. And you know, at 6'7", Maxi Escher is so long. Uh, actually, you have to give a lot of credit to D'Angelo Hamilton just to keep in step with that penetration from Maxi Escher. Escher was a problem for other teams when he was playing for Saigon last year. He continued to be a problem for many teams when he suited, suited up for the CLS Knights here in Season 9. And right now he is one of the candidates for actually for most valuable player as he has been one of the most consistent players or consistent imports in the league averaging 23 points per game close to 10 rebounds a steal close to one block and uh, shooting 42 percent from the three-point land and marco that's proven by the fact that cls changed imports the only man that they did not change was maxi esho now with a big turnaround from the record last season I'm sure he is definitely in the conversation for most valuable player. Saigon continues to miss. They do, do get that deflection though on that transition attack for the Saigon for the CLS Knights. Now with two and a half minutes gone, the home squad has outscored the Heat five to two here, or six to two rather, in the second quarter. The Not Heat have definitely struggled in the second period. Not as high scoring as the Game one where they had 31 all in the first quarter. Wong attacking Celia to a beautiful spin. Wong could not get it off the glass though. Here comes the heat. Hughes bodying a Bong Wei Long and then leaves it for Burrow. Taigon. Hughes with a breakdown. They're moving it around. Durker now sees an opening down the middle. Missed. Hamilton with the offensive rebound. He gets fouled and he'll head to the line for a pair. And that is one of the things that the Saigon Heat have been able to do well here on the road against the BTNC. As I say, average about 16 second chance points per ball game. We'll take a look at this again. Hamilton draws that foul on Jawato. He sinks the first free throw. And although they continue to struggle from the field. Yeah. Points from the free throw line. This is where that becomes very important. When you're not getting anything from the field, you'll get your points from there. Mm. Hamilton, however, could, could only get one of two. In game two, they had 26 free throw attempts. 21 of 26 for 80%. And that is what kept them in step with, uh, with the BTN CLS Knights. In game one, they were only 5 of 11. Esho gets to the cup again, getting creative. Dipsy do layup off the glass. And that time using his athleticism, D'Angelo Hamilton did not want to pick up an early second foul here in the first half. Saigon's problems slowly getting bigger and bigger here. And they need buckets, they need stops, they need to start now. So far, this is the biggest lead of the game. For the Knights, eight to three, second quarter in favor of the Knights. A timeout called right now by the Saigon Heat. Six eighteen remaining in the first half. It's a ten point lead for the home team, the CLS Knights.
Thanks for joining us here in the CN Basketball Season 9 Playoffs. This is the quarterfinals. We're bringing the action to you from the Gorker Tajaya in Surabaya, Indonesia. It's the CLS Knights up by 10 points, 29 to 19. Over the Saigon Heat, the winner of this game moves on to face Mono Vampire in another best of three semifinals. The loser will have to wait for next season in order to try and bounce back. And when it's the ABL, you wait about six, six months. months yeah. And you never want to be scratching your head for that long, thinking where things went wrong. Yep, and you know, Coach Kyle Julius recognizing the importance of this inbounds play. Drawing something up, but that's going to be a miss. A lucky break here for the Saigon Heat. A lucky break indeed. But at the same time, Marco, something we saw there is what's been going on here in the first half. Saigon has been getting okay looks. Maybe yeah. not the best of looks, but they've been getting open shots. It's just not falling in. And as is the norm, it's so hard to score here or to shoot from the outside here in Gorkur Tajai. They're only shooting at about 25%, but that's a nice alley-oop play between the two big men of the Heat. A couple of times, Hamilton's pass, entry pass supposedly for Barone did not connect. Finally, it does, and it produces two points. And the reason why it's so important to score in that possession because now it's, it's back down to a single deficit or single digit deficit for the Saigon Heat. Otherwise, if they did not score and the BTN CLS Knights had scored on this end, they would have been up to 12. Hamilton gets sent back there. They do recover the basketball, and Hughes gets money on the three. That's a big shot there for Trevon Hughes, especially for his confidence. Previously, one of five from downtown before hitting that one. Numerous times in this first half, the Saigon Heat have been lost on defense. That first step of the CLS Knights, whether it's Wong Wei Long, it's Esho, it's Herring, they get left behind and they rely on the last line of defense to stop it. But look at Hamilton, he had to try and defend Esho. Yeah. That's why there's no, there wasn't any last line defender. And you know, you have to give a lot of credit to Wong Wei Long. Seems to always choose the right types of shots. Does not force those triples whenever he sees that opening or that gap on the defensive end. Makes a strong penetration, draws the foul. So this is one of that. This is one of the values that you get from having a Wong Wei Long, a veteran playmaker for the BTN CLS Knights. Marco, we've stood side by side with Wong Wei Long. He's not. He's not that much, or it's not even taller than us. Yeah. I, I believe so. Stands maybe about five foot nine, five foot eight. But how is he able to be so effective in the ABL, even winning two local MVP awards? He's just a great veteran. He knows his strengths. He knows his weaknesses. He picks his spots well. And whenever he sees that he is at, at an advantage, uses a, that little burst of speed just to beat his man. Look at Jawato, attacking, missing. Jun Dankoa standing in front of Jawato and doing enough to alter the shot. Now that's a bad foul there on the part of Tyler Watkins. You're not going to steal the ball away from Kyle Barone that far away from your front or from your backcourt. Instead, he gives up a foul. And that's going to be the second personal foul on Tyler Watkins. That's two fouls on CLS Knights here in the second quarter. Saigon Heat has three. So for the Knights, Watkins has two. Jawato has one. Esho and Herring still have, have yet to commit a foul. For the Heat, Trayvon Hughes has two. Durker has two. Hamilton has one. Well, Trayvon Hughes has done a good job protecting those two fouls he committed early in the game. Hamilton. He has been stopped every time yeah. he attacks the basket. That's excellent help on the part of Nugroho. Wong to Herring. Douglas will set up the play for the CLS Knights. Esho wants it. Slipped a little bit though and so did Jawato on that attack. Esho from deep, no good. See Marco, that's a circumstance as well that we've heard players maybe complain or say about yeah. The floor here, the gym in Gorker Tajaya, it can get pretty slippery. Especially with, with the moisture, uh, with the humidity from the outside. Another great entry pass there from Hamilton to Kyle Barone. Second time that they connected on an alley-oop. It seems like they have found the formula 
of connecting with that big to big in high low play. They're taking it from the side. That forces the CLS Knights to call a timeout. They are still up though, 31 to 26. Uh, packed to the brim supporting their CLS Knights hoping that they get to support their team up until the semifinals and that hope is, doesn't stop there they are hoping they make it all the way to the finals and win it all here in ABL 9 but such is the hope also of the Saigon Heat Marco yep uh, this has been the most successful season of the BTN CLS Knights by far and they do not want this to be the last game that is played here in Gorkurta Jaya here in season nine. So they have come out full force here to support their home squad. And these are two teams that we've seen progress in the ABL throughout the years that they've played. And this was the goal. It continues to be yeah. the goal of this league to see all these teams, all these countries rise in the global scene of basketball. Esho was stopped there. Hughes quickly to their side. Goes to Koa on the corner, gets the ball back, inside now to Barone. Kyle losing his footing there, but recovers. Barone was fouled on the floor. He was surrounded by four purple shirts. But again, what is keeping the Saigon Heat in this game are those second chance opportunities. They already have six offensive rebounds, 10 second chance points compared to just three for the BTN CLSIS and whenever you are playing hostile territory territory, you have to outwork the home squad so far they've done a good job of that tonight Hamilton Eshu in front of him D'Angelo carving out space couldn't get the shot and again Firman Ogrojo standing tall excellent help defense there used down on the floor that was a solid pick from Maxi Eshu Trayvon really felt the impact of that screen. It looks like he fell on his back or on his lower back. So hopefully he's able to get back up and play at 100% because this is too big a game. Oh, not, you see the huh? pain on his face. But you also saw that gesture he sent to Coach Kyle Julia saying, now I'm not, I'm not going out of this game. I'm here to play. That is when, this is when big time players suck, up, suck it up and forget about the pain. There's always tomorrow to rest up and ice those uh, aching joints. And Marco, if Hughes doesn't power through, there might not be any tomorrow for the yeah. Saigon Heat. Well, you can see him there still limping. Yes, for the ball though. Wants it against Herring. Barone again. Oh, however, that shot did not fall in. Hughes from deep. Forget about Kane. He knocks down the triple. And again, that was an excellent high-low pass there from D'Angelo Hamilton. Sorry miss, but turned out to be a blessing in disguise, resulting in a triple from Hughes. What did Saigon change? Because earlier, every time they went to that play, the ball would be taken away or at least deflected. Now, they're getting good looks coming off that Hamilton, far out from the three-point line, lobbing it up to Barone inside. Well, for one thing, uh, Firman Ogrojo is not as quick to the ball as uh, Daryl Watkins. He's not as long as Daryl Watkins, so uh, he, they're not able to intimidate or to bother that pass from D'Angelo Hamilton as effectively. That went off of the leg of Wong Wei Long. It will stay with the Saigon Heat with 14 seconds on their shot clock. And from being outscored 8-3 to three here in the second quarter, they've leveled it up 
10 points apiece here in the second for both teams. Terry Kern getting inside. Chris, hook shot, doesn't go. It's one way long. He has grabbed a couple of rebounds here. Look at Barone erase that shot. Kyle Barone, the goaltender on the floor here. First block of the game. Actually, should be his second block already. And that's not even counting all the times the Saigon Heat bigs, Barone and Hamilton, altered the shots yep. of CLS. May not be blocks, but forced misses. 2 and 15 remaining in the first half. CLS keeps possession. Chowato coming out to get that leather. Working against Barone, sends it to Esho. Esho attacking baseline. Hanging in the air, no good. No foul call there. There was a lot of contact on that penetration from Maxi Esho. The officials letting them play yep. here in this do or die battle. Saigon versus CLS Knights. Barone and Esho getting tangled up underneath. Five seconds on the shot clock. Hamilton has to put it up now. Defense of Watkins there to force that violation. And of course, Hamilton will be asking for that blocking foul. Yep. What did you see there? Well, it, 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 it was the right guess on the part of Daryl Watkins that the referee is not going to bail out the Saigon Heat on a shot clock violation because of that. I think Quatran had an open look earlier. Should probably have taken it instead of giving it up to his big man. A minute and a half remaining in the first half of game three. Esho looking for options, surveying the floor. He feeds Watkins against Barone underneath. Darrell trying to create some space. A couple of defenders bothering him. Bodies on the floor. Watkins... When he's posting up, he's yeah. overpowering the bigs of the Saigon Heat. And good recognition from the home squad immediately attacking that matchup between Watkins and Kyle Barone. And they're going to draw the first personal foul on Barone on that sequence. Watkins will be heading to the line for a pair of freebies. Looking to extend this two-point lead enjoyed by the BT and CLS Knights. Coach Kyle Julius will sub out D'Angelo Hamilton for the remainder of this, uh, for the rest of this second quarter. I was just reminding you of the results of the first two games in this series. Game one, lopsided win, 84 to 59 for the CLS Knights. And then Saigon recalibrated and took game two, 86 to 81. And now here we are in this closely contested game three. And I think it's very evident, Marco, that these two teams playing with a lot of pride in each and se every single one of those guys in the uniform, whether it's a player uniform or a coach uniform, mm -hmm. they're on a mission here today. And you know, if, uh, if the regular season series was any indication, the average winning margin of the Knights against the Saigon Heat is only 1.5 points per game. So that's how close they have played it. If you consider game one as an outlier where they really shot lights out. Watkins extends the, the CLS lead to three. Barely over a minute remaining in quarter number two. Koa goes to Dirkner, almost lost it. Dirkner puts the three up. Not exactly his range. And those are the shots that the Knights will give the Saigon Heat all game long. Chowato has a shot from outside. Doesn't fall in though. The Knights Another. shooting 25% from the three point land while the Heat only are shooting much better at 33%. That's mainly because of Kyle Barone and Trayvon Hughes. Justin Young lost some space underneath. Koatran forces it. Watkins with the rejection. And that is the presence of Darren Watkins. Excellent timing on that help. He sent a message with that block too. Now it's last shot time for the CLS Knights. They enter the second quarter up by two. Up by five rather. Herring 
falling away, doesn't get the shot, and it is going to be the end of the first half. A couple of misses on both ends, and we have an exciting one here inside the Gorky Tajaya. The BTN CLS Knights only up by three points, 32 to 29. Trayvon Hughes leading all scorers with 11 points. But on the side of the CLS Knights, it has been team effort led by Maxi Escho as seven. We'll take this break more of game three here in Indonesia in just a bit. What makes a champion? Passion, grit, determination. A challenge can make or break you. Work hard in silence. Let success be your noise. Never stop, you can only get better. The only one that can hold you back is yourself. We are the composers of our own destiny. Nothing is out of reach if we dare to dream the impossible. Believe the unbelievable and never take no for an answer. Because greatness is in all of us. For we are all champions. It is a great game and also the crowd is very, very excited. It is a great atmosphere. And one of the crowd is the former BTN CLS Knights player. We have Caleb and also Hans right here, who is coming from the local uh, National League here in Indonesia. Okay, Caleb, kalau bicara soal atmosphere pertandingan sepanjang babak kedua ini gimana menurut lo? Ketat banget ya game ya, apalagi dua-duanya do or day ini kan. Jadi pasti semuanya pengen pengen masuk ke fase berikutnya lah. Tapi saya yakin uh, CLS pasti menang game ini. Dilihat dari crowd juga, gila lah, gokil lah. So
difficult place to win. These fans back their team 100% and they will yell and scream and pull for their team unconditionally. To begin game number two of the quarterfinals between the Saigon Heat and the BTN CLS Knights. Barone against Maxi Escho. Barone kicks it out. Celia, the surprise starter, knocking it down for the Heat. Passing into the corner. Barone, triple is good, and the Heat are starting off like a house on fire. Celia again. He is on fire. The Heat, three triples to start game number two. Watkins. Double team is ready. Now it's Herring's turn to silence the crowd. The BTN CLS Knights were looking to end the series tonight, but they eat. Wanting to protect home court. And you can just listen to this crowd. One of the toughest buildings to play in in the ASEAN Basketball League. There's yeah, no question about it. These two teams, when they step on their home courts, they get a real home court advantage. Outstanding fans in both their venues. And as we see year in and year out, these wonderful fans of Benjamin City pack this house, making a ton of noise, make it tough on the, on the visiting opponent. What makes a champion? Passion, grit, determination. A challenge can make or break you. Work hard in silence. Let success be your noise. Never stop, you can only get better. The only one that can hold you back is yourself. We are the composers of our own destiny. Nothing is out of reach if we dare to dream the impossible. Believe the unbelievable and never take no for an answer. Because greatness is in all of us. For we are all champions. What makes a champion? Passion, grit, determination. A challenge can make or break you. Work hard in silence. Let success be your noise. Never stop, you can only get better. The only one that can hold you back is yourself. I'm a warrior. 
We are the composers of our own destiny. Nothing is out of reach if we dare to dream the impossible. Believe the unbelievable and never take no for an answer because greatness is in all of us for we are all champions. We're moments away from the start of the second half here inside of Gorkerta Jaya. Let's take a look at some of the numbers that uh, from the first 20 minutes of action here. But I think that what stands out is that the BTNC last night have only made two triples in this game. And remember, they had seven triples in the first quarter alone of game one. They shoot at about 37% uh, from the three-point line. So this is way below their norm while the Saigon Heat are 4 out of 13. As well, that is what has kept them in this game. Also, their second chance points uh, clearly in their favor, 16 to 5, if I'm not mistaken. In terms of assists, though, 7 for the BTNC last night, 6 for the Saigon Heat. Free throw attempts, though, in favor of the home squad. They've gone to the line 10 times, converting on 6, while the Saigon Heat have only made 1 out of 2 from the free throw stripe. Two players in double figures for the Saigon Heat, that's a Trayvon Hughes with 11, Kyle Barone with 13, while nobody yet in double figures for the home squad. Uh, Maxi Esho leading the way with seven points. Yeah, but for Saigon, after Hughes and Barone, the next leading scorer are guys who have two points only, and yep. it's a more balanced attack for the CLS Knights here. Although, Mark, we have to say it has, it was a highly defensive first half. And that, I think for the Saigon Heat, that is to their liking especially here in Gorkur Jaya, They do not want the CLS Knights to really shoot it lights out. So if they can keep it at a low scoring pace, if they can be, they can execute on their half court set and try to capitalize on those mismatches with Hamilton and Kyle Barone in the post, they're going to be in good shape going into the fourth quarter. So here we are about to begin the third quarter. It's do or die. It's next round or next season. For these two teams, Judd Sulit and Marco Benitez here to bring in the action straight from the Gorkerta Jaya in Surabaya, Indonesia. Got a full house here, as you can see. Three-point lead for tonight. Any adjustments that you're looking to see from either squad? Well, I think they're going to try to get Max Yesha going to the basket a lot more as D'Angelo Hamilton gets the block there. Probably not allow, or not uh, settle for those outside shots if you're Maxi Yesho to try to get more into the scoring. Remember, he's averaging about 23 points per game, so this is a far cry from his average. Meanwhile, for the Saigon Heat, and let's see if they can continue attacking the post and uh, possibly get more contribution from guys other than Kyle Barone and Trayvon Hughes. Interesting here that Coach Chow Kyle Julius is putting Chris Durker on dog herring initially. But there was a switch that put him on one way long, eventually forcing that turnover. And you know, so far, Durker has done a good job, a commendable job, defending Doug Herring. Doug Herring with five points, although he has four assists to his name, but uh, he has not really gone off because of the defense of uh, Chris Durker. And Marco, three points and four assists in the first quarter. So he only had two points yeah. and was barely felt in the second period. That's correct, Judd. Good point. Here's Hughes. Has to shoot now. That's going to be a shot clock violation. And you know, because of the 
because of the intensity and the loudness of the crowd, Saigon Heat did not hear that buzzer go off for 24 seconds. Saigon contesting that call. They're gonna try to sort things out. No, but the, the whistle stands. It is gonna be a 24 yeah. second violation. I look at Durker try to deny Doug Herring. Wong getting to the cup, looking for a teammate. He spots Esha but far out from the basket. Maxi thought about it again. This time passes out to Jawato, not getting the three. And you know, whenever you have Jawato taking that triple instead of uh, Wong Wei Long or Maxi Esho, that's a win for the Heat. And that should wake up this arena. Maxi Esho dropping the hammer. Again, live ball turnovers translating in transition points. We've not seen a lot of those here in this game. Barone silences the crowd with the three. How big has Kyle Barone been? Second triple of the game. He's two of four. 16 points for the world import of Saigon. Wong orchestrating. Had to involve his other guard, Dog Herring. He goes up high to Watkins, deflected by Durker. Yeah. As you mentioned, Durker's activity yes. on defense has been big. He has been one of the X factors on the defensive end for Coach Kyle Julius. Only two points on one out of four, but defensively, he has been solid. Another lob play. That time, Durker will be whistled for a foul. A bit of a late call there. And I guess that's why the Heat are upset. And you know, Durker did not expect that they were going to go for the lob to the point guard in Doug Herring. So he was caught off guard on that inbounds play. So Herring will find himself at the line, shooting a pair of freebies. Like you said, he has five points. And actually the second leading scorer of the CLS Knights next to Esho's nine points. And I believe that's going to be the third personal foul, if I'm not mistaken, on Chris Durker. It is going to be that. It looks like Durker will be replaced in a bit. So Justin Young comes in initially for D'Angelo Hamilton. Durker stays on the floor. But Hamilton will not leave the official's table. And he will check in for Durker if the second free throw from Herring is yeah. converted. Three-point lead once again for the CLS Knights. A missed free throw. And in a game as close as this one, Marco, that might haunt you later yeah. in the game. And if you're the Saigon Heat, you want Trayvon Hughes to really try to impose his will here or be aggressive on the offensive end. Remember, 17 third-quarter points back in CIS in game two. Here's Hughes. Space cut out. Ball taken away by the Knights. They're running. Esho receives it. Will finish for the easy deuce. That's another forward pass there for Maxi Esho. Easy buckets for Maxi Esho. And that pass was put right in the money. Right where Esho needed it. No more dribbles necessary. Only delivering the two points. We have a timeout here inside of Gorker Jaya. They have responded quite well. However, still a bit short at, up to this point as they are down by five points, 37 to 32 with seven and 20 remaining in the third quarter. 
Every second that ticks off of that clock is a missed opportunity for Saigon. So they have to patch things up. And that's why Coach Cal Jewel just called that timeout after seeing Maxi Esho get yeah. two easy layups in transition. Prior to those two buckets from Esho in transition, they only had five fast break points. They average about 11 fast break points against the Saigon Heat here in Gorkur Tajaya. Coach Kyle Julius immediately wanting to correct that. Let's see what the Heat can com come up with here. Barone inside to Young. Justin trying to go to the other side. Barone, a couple of tips. Nothing there. Sorry, misses there for Kyle Barone. He was right there in front of the rim. Wong was trying to go to Jawato. Got a bit too fancy. Yeah. Could have made it a six-point advantage. Now you give, or make that a seven-point advantage. Now you give the uh, Saigon Heat chance to trim it down to a single possession game. Celia looking for Barone. Esho with a great denial. Hamilton taking the three. It's no good. Herring with the rebound. Those are the shots that you want Saigon to take if you're the BTN CLS Knights. Watkins with the escape and a two-head throwdown. And I think D'Angelo Hamilton was waiting for Watkins to try to back him down. Nice front pivot or nice reverse pivot and then a quick explosion for the jam. What a move there. And that certainly woke this crowd up. Justin Young not getting the two points. The Heat have missed their last four attempts. Actually, their last six, six attempts. You just remember when uh, Barone could not get a bucket, a couple of tip-ins. Wong. No. Saigon dodging a bullet on that one. That was a wide open three from Wong Wei Long. Barone now inside. This is more of his comfort zone. How about Hamilton diving towards the basket and Baron spotting him? Uh, Kyle Baron returning the favor to D'Angelo Hamilton. He was the recipient of many of Hamilton's interior passes in that first half. Saigon defending now. Herring looking to attack against Young. Pass deflected, recovered. Chowato losing that basketball. And it's going to be a foul on Hughes. Oh, tough call there for the Saigon. He looked like a kickball on the part of Brandon Jawato. I'm not sure about that. I would love to see another look at what happened in that sequence. Here you see it. Use. Oh, maybe oh, there. Yeah, that's yeah. That left arm. That's a good catch by our referee where Use. He was falling to the floor and used his left arm to kind of pull Jawada with him. Yep. So we stand corrected. That was a good call on the part of the referee. Very emphatic conversation here between Coach Kyle Julius and D'Angelo Hamilton. But more importantly, Jati, that's going to be a third personal foul on Trayvon Hughes. He's got to be careful. Durker also... the nursing the same number of fouls he's guarding hearing right now there's that switch Kurniawan by the baseline no good Baron grabs that basketball and off to the side of Saigon we go Kurniawan still cannot buy a jumper Hughes goes to Koa Tran to Durker he will take but he hesitated before yeah. he put that up once you hesitate, you normally miss that second attempt. It's, I'm not sure it's also Dirk or Yuan taking those three-point shots. He's very good in the paint. So and far, Dirk has been 0 for 2 from long distance. Here's Herring against Trayvon Hughes. Hughes has to be careful here. Dog shoots over the defense of Trayvon Hughes. And Doug Herring is the type of point guard who will just wear you down with his moves. Keeps his dribble alive. Hughes will miss on that three. But CLS will not be able to hang on to that basketball. It's going to go back to Saigon. And you know, this is the point in the game where the Saigon Heat have to check their shot selection. They cannot fall in love with a three-point shot. Those are back-to-the-basket attempts. 
using Kyle Barone or D'Angelo Hamilton against a smaller big man of the BTNC LSIs had been working for them. Another three point attempted. And that's exactly what you did not want if you're coach Kyle Julius. Here come the Knights. Herring looking for teammates. And said now will take Durker to the post. Kick out to Kurniawa. Sandy gets it to Watkins. Daryl attacking Kyle Barone. Shot rims out. Gives a chance to the Saigon Heat to come up with something. Trayvon zigzagging. Out to Barone. Open look. No good. Durker with the rebound. Young down the lane. Oh man. Saigon cannot get anything going here. Lucky break for them that Herring almost lost his footing. They got to stop that transition attack for the yeah. CLS Knights. Wise move there on the part of the Knights to bring the ball out. Oh, and a risky attempt to strip that ball away for use, but it pays off. Trayvon goes to Young. Look at how hesitant they have been on the offensive end, and even a shot right at the basket, a gimme missed by Barone. Just baby that shot, he was too wide open. Sorry, missed there for Barone. Gelato losing it. Hughes will take another three. This time gets bottom of the net. Finally able to convert his Trayvon Hughes. Both teams had been able to score on su su uh, succeeding possessions. Two minutes and change remaining in the third quarter. You know, for all the good that has happened for the CLS Knights in this period, they are only up by four. But you know, Judd, both teams have scored less than 10 points here in the third quarter. Well, oh, it's because of defensive schemes like that. Durker attacking no good. Koatran finding a way to that ball. Hughes will take one again. This time will miss. Escher will lose it to the baseline. It's going to be Saigon basketball. Offensive rebounding going the way of the Saigon Heat. They've got 13 second chance points and that is what is keeping them actually in this game. It has been a crazy quarter, a crazy game. You know, that and the lack of three-point shooting by the CLS Knights. They've only converted on two out of 11 three-point attempts. Maxi Escho got the warrant for delay of game because he took that ball and put it on the ground far away from where the referee was asking for it. Barone in trouble. He gets a hold of it. Release pass to Tran. Losing that basketball. CLS on the run. Durker looking to defend. Jawato converting. And Durker did not want to commit his fourth personal foul. But you know, he still made it difficult yeah. for Durker to make that shot. For Jawato rather, but Brandon Jawato just found a way to produce points. Durker near the basket. Durker has been forced to play out of his comfort zone. And Dong Herring, money on the three. And that is big. Five-point swing. Turnover for the Heat. Translating in a triple for the home squad. Nine-point lead again for the BTN CLS Knights. The alarm ringing on the side of the Saigon Heat. They call a timeout.
tension was already high inside this stadium when we began, even before we began. It just continued to rise higher. And it is at a maximum right now with a minute, less than a minute remaining in the third. We expect it to be this way for the, for the rest of the ball game. Shotsudit and Marco Benitez on the call for game three of the quarterfinals between Saigon and CLS. Young attacking, getting that one-hander in. Oh, that's a big possession there, big bucket on the part of the Saigon Heat because if they had not scored on that possession, home squad will have a chance to make this a double-digit advantage. And you get the sense that here in the third quarter, momentum has really swung in favor of the Knights. Long way long with 10 seconds left in the period. CLS gauging their attack. Wong, pass deflected. Gunyawan passing an open three. Esho could not sink it. And time will expire. After 10 more minutes in the third quarter, the CLS Knights making some strides here, upping their advantage to seven points, 46 to 39. We got one last quarter left to bring you from Gorka Ertajaya. Don't go anywhere. ABL will be right back. Last 10 minutes in this game, last 10 minutes in the season of one of these two teams. Will the CLS Knights hang on to victory or will the Saigon Heat find a way to steal game three on the road? Jotsudit and Marco Benitez here. Marco, how would you describe how this game has gone? Now this is an old-fashioned grind-out game where both teams are struggling on offense. BTN CLS Knights have only converted on three triples while the Saigon Heat are shooting 30%, 16 of 52 from the field. Durker, difficult shot. And I don't know, he's been he's been trying a lot of shots that we don't normally yeah. see him take in games. Chris Durker is one out of eight from the field. Only two players for the Heat. Trayvon Hughes and uh, Kyle Barone are in double figures with 14 and 16 apiece. The Knights looking to buy more cushion here. Valve called on Justin Young as he was trying to defend Daryl Watkins. Where it's so difficult, you see how big a man, how well built Watkins is. Yeah. And Young and gives up a couple of inches. He's a legit seven footer talking about Daryl Watkins. So immediately, Kyle Barone is sent back in. Good recognition there right away for the BTN CLS Knights. This is not impossible still for the Saigon Heat. Down by seven, nine minutes remaining. More than enough time. But you got to get your shots in. You got to get those tops too. Wong. Bucket for him. 
Uh, this is Wong Wei Long. Wong Wei Long time. Former Singapore slinger guard, two-time local MVP, knows when to make the big shots. He has been in the finals already in the ABL. He knows what it takes to win. Use ball strip momentarily. He recovers. Saigon. There is a foul on Dog Herring hitting the forearm of Trayvon. Trayvon Hughes, so confident in uh, crossing over Doug Herring, but he's been picked off once there by Doug Herring. Incredible how the CLS Knights have only committed six fouls in total yeah. in this game. <laughs> that was only their sixth team foul, while Saigon Eat already with 11. The cut for Young was bothered that time. Forward attack. CLS, Kurniawan to walk. They're looking for Watkins, denied by Barone. And Sandy Kurniawan does not have any confidence in his outside stroke. A kickball from Justin Young. That will reset the Saigon, or the CLS shot clock to 14 seconds. Just a nine point advantage. When you're down by nine, earlier they were just down by seven, you always think to yourself, Marco, we're only one run away yeah. from getting back in this game. Problem is, that run hasn't come from the side right. They've been able to make stops, but they've just had a difficult time executing. That's going to be a clear foul on the part of D'Angelo Hamilton. He was beat by that first quick step from Maxi Escho. The same thing that happened a lot of times back in the first quarter. The explosiveness of the BTN CLS Knights getting the better of the Saigon Heat and Esho will head to the line for two free throws. And if I'm D'Angelo Hamilton, I'll probably hang back a little more, give Esho that three-point shot and just challenge it on the release. Yeah, because Esho hasn't really taken or made a lot of three-point shots here in this game. So far, he is zero for three from long distance. Only Jawato and Doug Herring have converted. But when he gets near the basket, he has been very efficient. Yeah. Two free throws for Esho. He makes the first one. Two out of three so far from the line for Maxi Esho. How Two. ironic would it be if Esho would be the one to eliminate his former team? Yes. He makes good with both free throws. Our lead is up to 11 points. I have to execute here if you're the Heat. You cannot let this slip. Young looking for his options. He goes to Barone. Triple team goes up to Hamilton. Hamilton got caught up. A pushing foul on the CLS Knights. It will stay with the Saigon Heat. Looks like they're going to give it to number five one way long. So. Kyle Barone, good presence of mind there to lob it up to D'Angelo Hamilton as he had nowhere to go. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Less than eight minutes remaining in the ball game. Young goes up to Barone. Quick basket for the Heat. And how many times has Kyle Barone converted off of that lob pass? And it just proves to you that Saigon for them they don't have to make basketball difficult. They yeah. can offer easy plays like those. Esho missing that time. A little bit, a little bit of a zone on the interior there for the Heat. Hughes getting to his spot. Attacking baseline. Uh, that's going to be a foul there on Maxi Esho. But that's going to be a, just a baseline inbound as Trevon Hughes went for the pass. He was actually set, trying to sell the, the shot at them at the last second, but I mean, he was underneath the basket already. No way that could have been a shot attempt at that point. See, his eyes, well, that's also presence of mind. I think if he found a way to work a miracle and make that basket, they would have counted <laughs> the shot, but he was just in too deep. Hughes may have hit Esho on the face. Hamilton drops it to the Baron, gets rejected. Esho grabbing that board. A lot of physicality, a lot of contact in the paint there. Herring zigzagging. 
hanging mid-air. Rebound Barone. Now it's Saigon's turn to attack. Khan Barone finishes through the foul. And this is what you talk, what you mean when you talk about shot selection. Tron had an open look from three, instead attacks the basket and finds the streaking Kyle Barone for two points. Once again, the Saigon Heat chipping away on the CLS Knights lead. They are down by seven with a chance for Barone to turn it down to six when we return. of entertainment here inside the Gorker Tajaya for game three of the quarterfinals between the home team, the BTN CLS Knights, and the visiting Saigon Heat. And for these two squads, they're in, they're little, literally is no tomorrow in ABL Season 9 if they don't go home with a win, but only one of them can take it. Now this is going to be a test of character for these two teams in unfamiliar territory as these two teams Average about 80 points per game. Both struggling offensively. Kyle Barone with 21 points. He has been leading the Saigon Heat. And he is hoping that when everything is said and done, he would have done enough yeah, to has, carry them to the semifinals. He's been the big difference maker here. A little bit of a man zone thrown by the Saigon Heat. Six point advantage for the BTN CLS Knights. Herring. Gets it a bucket. Again, that first step. Yeah, good patience at the part of the of the Knights. Khan, jumper no good. Hamilton gets it right back, an easy put back for him. And credit half the basket to that tap coming from Justin Young. Again, second chance opportunities, keeping the, the heat in this game. Still a lot of time remaining here. The Knights, they cannot take it easy. The Saigon Heat, they have to step it up. Long way long. Just how, so good. How beautiful was that shot. Back to an eight point advantage for the Knights. Koa goes to the corner to Young. They find Hamilton in the post against Watkins. Trayvon Hughes, no good. Barone with a cleanup. 17 second chance points for the Saigon Heat. Kyle Barone, D'Angelo Hamilton. Multiple offensive rebounds. Many times it has been said about do or die games, about crucial moments. You sometimes need to throw away the X's and O's. It's about yeah. heart and hustle and what you're willing to give up. Esho drops his defender, dropping the jumper as well. Give half that basket to the Gorkurta Jaya floor as D'Angelo Hamilton loses his footing. Oh, and Hughes thought that Hamilton was going to be there. Great defense, though, for D'Angelo Hamilton. They're off and running. They have numbers. Saigon. Oh, what a block! Watkins from out of nowhere closes the door. That's excellent timing on the part of Darrell Watkins. He knew. But Kyle Barone was not going to put the ball down. Instead, go for the alley-oop. That was such a big play. And that gets this crowd all pumped up. 4 and 41 left to play. 
Big possession here for the visiting squad. Hughes, that ball was tapped. It will stay with Saigon. They've got 18 seconds on the shot clock. That's a lot of time to set up their offense as Durker comes in for Hamilton. Marco, I'll say this as early as now. You'll see the crowd. It's so easy right now to get carried away with your emotions. I just hope we don't see any confetti before the final buzzer. That was an early shot on the part of Trayvon.